So, hey, it's good to be here with uh, Tim Thomas as we continue our Share Your Story series at St. Anne. So, welcome, Tim. Good to be with you. Hey, hey, Kurt. Thanks for having me. Yeah. So, it's um, Easter season, and one of the ways that we're wanting to just celebrate Easter, Jesus is, is alive, he's risen, is by um, just telling stories of, of how God's moved in our community over the past year, just in, in recent months. Um, you know, we also want to make concrete and tangible our vision as a parish. You know, our vision is to bring people to Jesus, to form disciples, and then to send them out to transform the world, to send out missionary disciples. Um, and so um, you're a beautiful embodiment of that vision uh, in real life. Um, you've got a cool story that goes back multiple years, and we're not going to get into that right now, but of course, you were you were brought to Jesus through another church. Um, when was that? How many years ago? Yeah, that was, so that was, um, gosh, you're uh, putting me on the spot on timeline. Uh, um, you know, I grew up in a Pentecostal church, uh, so it was, it was right from as a child, right? Um, and then I came to the Catholic Church in 2013, 2014. Okay. So you came... Uh, to uh became catholic in 2013 you went through rcia at saint anne that's correct you've yep. been in alpha you've been a leader in alpha you've been in a connect group you're a connect group leader um you've also yeah. been involved in prison ministry prison alpha over the last year um so yep. it's really cool just to see how you've continued to grow at saint anne so more recently how has god been moving in your life in recent months or over the past year yeah, it's it's that's a that's a really good question, and you know it's it's been amazing to be part of uh, such great ministries and and just you know some of the ministries you talked about and and that journey for myself um, and being able to minister and 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 love what Saint Anne's is doing um, as part of our initiative to be a, to be a mission church uh, and to create disciples. Uh, you know, one of the things is. Um, one of the things I've been experiencing over the past few months is really this hunger, uh, this desire for real intimacy with, with Jesus. You know, uh, I, I've started to feel like, as you know, it's great uh, that I'm part of these ministries, being able to lead others to Jesus and, and, and guide people along the way or live life along with them. Prison ministry was such an awesome, awesome uh, ministry to be part part of. Connect, my Connect community is is, is it's amazing, and I love meeting with them every week. Uh, but also, intimacy with the Lord seemed like something that was others had and I didn't have. So being sort of like a bystander. Um, and I've noticed that over the past year, um, specifically the past four months, this sort of anxiousness, this nervousness really build up. Uh, this year has been a focus for me. Uh, to be a a better father, uh, a better husband, uh, and and really make that a focus, right? Because that that being my calling, uh, and, and as that that sort of it comes to the forefront, uh, also understanding what the Lord is calling me. Then the whole uh, coronavirus pandemic happened, and and you know obviously life has changed for a lot of people. Yeah. So you were you were feeling. A desire for more intimacy amidst all of this ways you've grown and engagement in the, in the church, but you were feeling maybe a de desire for more, maybe even a little bit of anxiety. So what'd you do with that? Yes. So, um, you know, one of the things that I, uh, you know, try to focus at prayer time. Um, right. One of, you know, as part of our connect group, we talk a lot about in the, in, the, in the past few months, we talked a lot about gifts of the Holy Spirit, truth of the Holy Spirit. Uh, and then uh, just margin, margin B, having balance, uh, um, having e everything appropriate, having making time uh, for appropriately for everything. Right. And not doing too much of anything um, and how you do that with prayer, how you do that being a disciple of Jesus. Um, so one of the things was prayer and prayer was starting to be very challenging for me. Just was experiencing a dryness or not feeling it right is feeling that 
sort of presence of the Lord. Um, and, uh, you know, one of the things that, uh, you know, I started doing was starting to take pockets of time uh, throughout the day uh, for prayer uh, more, uh, rather than just one time or two times in the beginning of the end of the day. Um, and so sort of not kind of taking a step back, right? This feeling of anxiety, this feeling of nervousness starting to burden down on me, uh, this pressure of having to be a good husband, a good father, started staring me right in the face, right as coronavirus happened, mm-hmm. right? Because everyone is right there. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, so it, it's, that was the challenge I was facing. And, you know, um, I talked a little bit about prayer. Those pockets or moments of prayer, uh, really understanding and and connecting with the Lord in short amounts, right? An example that I, I like to share is, you know, when I'm with my wife, uh, you know, we go to work and we don't, you know, we both are busy. We come back with kids and at the end of the day, we just feel like we haven't talked to each other versus when we're texting each other or we're calling each other throughout the day. There's that feeling of closeness towards the end of the day. Uh, and that's, you know, I kind of relate to that with the Lord. Uh, is as I connect with the Lord in multiple uh, parts throughout the day, there's that feeling of connected and and the and the opportunity to unload my burdens throughout um and i started feeling a that intimacy i've been craving for um when i took away the pressure of i have to spend an hour in prayer or i have to spend two hours in prayer when it was a minute it was three minutes or 10 minutes um and then i asked the question right lord what do you think about me um and I started asking the question, felt the Holy Spirit leading the question of, Lord, where are you working inside of me? Like, why am I feeling this anxiousness? Why am I feeling this burden? I want to be a good father. I want to be a good dad. Um, I want to have this balance that we've been learning about at Connect. I want to be a disciple like my church is teaching me to. I want to be a missionary. Uh, but then also understanding that the Lord is working and restoring and healing it's still a process, right? But even having that experience of intimacy with the Lord has been so sweet and tender and beautiful. So, yeah, it sounds like you, there are a couple themes that God is working on your heart for your connect group, margin, slowing down, gifts of the Holy Spirit, and then coronavirus happened. And <laughs> it's like, God just used that to, um, as use that to help you grow in those areas and that there's been a lot of graces for you. And, um, and absolutely. Yeah. Just encountering him as there has been maybe more margin and inviting him into your day, I guess. Um, any, any final thoughts as we wrap up? Um, just, it's beautiful to hear, you know, just seeing you continue to grow, you know, cause sometimes people think if we do something like sharing your stories, they've all got to be uh, an initial come to faith testimony through alpha or something. And, you know, part yeah. of it is um, conversion isn't just a one-time thing. It's an ongoing process. And I think we need to hear the stories of how people continue to wrestle with surrendering and, and ongoing conversion, deepening conversion with the Lord. So any final thoughts as we wrap up? Yeah, I, I love uh, telling, especially, you know, I, I come from a non-Catholic background, so I have a lot of non-Catholic friends. I love the look on people's faces when I tell them what St. Anne's that my church is doing. And they're like, really? That's all that stuff happened with your church. So it's, it's, it's always kind of amusing to see that, that reaction. And, and I really love what the Lord is doing. And I love what we are doing directionally um, as a church, really that call to be a disciple, um, you know, growing up as a, as a, as a Pentecostal, sometimes that that's, seemed very overwhelming and complex. However, you know, as an adult going through my conversion, it's so beautiful for me in my personal journey to see that the Lord's kind of calling me back, sort of back to the basics, right? Be a disciple, go and evangelize. Um, And I I love that. I embrace that journey. I just feel like I was made to be part of it. 
And through that, through whether it's through prison ministry or through Connect, um, uh, I feel my personal journey is very intertwined. Um, and being where I am today, where I am starting to experience sweetness and tenderness mm. and intimacy with the Lord, I can't wait to see where that journey uh, with my church takes me along. So uh, awesome. I, I am blessed and I'm, I'm, I'm happy and I'm looking forward to uh, uh, being part of the journey. That's awesome, Tim. Thanks. Well, hearing your story, it, it reminds me of when people hear about our vision, bringing people to Jesus, forming disciples, send, it's, it's a transform the world. It's not just a linear journey. And, uh, you know, yep. now you've advanced to here. I mean, the reality is we're constantly being brought anew to Jesus. We're constantly being formed more deeply. And we're all, you know, being sent on mission in, in new ways. And so yep. you know, I see all that in your life. So, um, well, it's great to connect to you like this. And, and super thankful for your yes and your stepping up and um, being a, a leader in what we're trying to do at CNN. So, uh, yeah, thank you, Kurt. Love, love the opportunity and I love the uh, opportunity to share what the Lord should be doing. Thanks, brother.